Hello, a very good evening to you, and welcome to Scotty McClure's special general election show. It's uh, Tuesday, and um, that is Tuesday, we've got it, the 18th of April. Welcome, welcome, I say. This is obviously very much an ad hoc show, and uh, I thought we'd find out what you all thought of the general election. It's all very well watching mainstream television and uh, seeing all the pundits and the journalists and people like that talking, but it's really you that we want to find out because it's you that a general election will affect. Now, at 11.15 this morning, the Prime Minister, Theresa May, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, uh, appeared outside 10 Downing Street, her official residence, and said that she wanted to uh, seek a vote in Parliament for a general election on the 8th of June. Now, this is very, very interesting because for this to happen, obviously she's got to get Parliament to agree. Now, I suspect they will agree to that, but we want to know, what do you think is behind this general election? Is it just an extension of the cat fight within the Conservative Party that brought us Brexit and started to break up Britain? So that's what we're looking at. So we'd like your views now. I'm Scotty McClure, I am the world's top broadcaster, so it's quite right that we should be discussing this live on Facebook Live, one of the world's great broadcast platforms. It's uh, 9 o'clock in the United Kingdom, 2100 hours British summer time. And I'm with you for a few minutes so that we can find out what you think is going on with uh, the uh, call for a general election in our Brexit Britain, our broken Britain, and find out what is happening. Now, obviously, um, you know, what would be best for you? What would be best for our country? What would be best for the people of Scotland and England and Ireland and Wales and Northern Ireland? Now, who have we got with us tonight? Hello, Scotty. It's David from Paisley. Mum, I love you, would be nice. So David Wright from Paisley said, Mum, I love you. Thanks for that, David. But we are hoping to discuss the announcement today of the uh, general election by the British Prime Minister, Theresa May. Now, if you'd like to talk to me about it on Skype, you can Skype in scotty.mcclue, or scotty full stop mcclue, scotty period mcclue. That's the Skype. The Skype is running now. Feel free to come on and let us hear from you. Dave Hemsley's watching. Dinky do. Dave, thank you very much for all your kindness. Dinky do to you. And uh, Scotland at the moment. Oh, you're in Scotland at the moment, David. Excellent stuff. Great stuff. Great to know that. Brexit's fabulous for Britain, says Dave Hemsley. Well, it hasn't even happened yet. Nothing's happened, but the pound has plummeted. We know that. So if you've got any ideas about why it's fabulous, do let us know, David, because we'd love to hear them. So there you are. Kevin Malcolm McGregor watching. Good, good. Watching and listening in Belgium. Uh, a five for abroad. Dinky do, says Lee Peter. Fantastic. Lee's in Belgium. Now spread the word, guys. Share, 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 share that this video is happening right now just cool the beans calm it right down and carefully and sensibly right click on the link and send it round your facebook all right ian gotti's watching dinky do ian gotti the man that had about half an hour's sleep last night tut 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 i awakened up in the night and um i thought i'll just have a look and see what's happening and uh, there you were excellent so, um, lots and lots of things. Wadge is there. Wadge Hashmi. Hello, Wadge. Toto. Franchiti. Toto. We haven't heard from you for some time. Lovely to have you back with us and watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, live on Facebook Live right now as we speak. So, share and share and share. Now, guys, if you've just joined us and you've never heard of Scotty McClue, because perhaps you're an alien life form from another planet, 
Please don't worry, you are very, very welcome. All members of the human race, all outsiders if they're well behaved, and all animals, all creatures great and small, are very welcome to join us on Scotty McCrew's show live on Facebook Live. The big show takes place on Sunday evenings at 10 o'clock sharp, 2200 hours British summertime. This is me just popping up to do a general election special with you to find out what you, the people, think of the British Prime Minister Theresa May's announcement at 11.15 this morning. Hi Scotty, I sent you a friend a request the other day, this is James Seamus McCloskey, and I think I have responded to it, Seamus, but I shall check it for you. So there we are. And um, who we get? How can Theresa May say she respects Scotland and Scotland's voice when her party only have one MP and the SNP have 56? A very good question, Tony Mark. Very, very fair. I think she's taking a bit of poetic license. I was listening to her speech this morning and she was trying to make out that Britain is united and is working together for Brexit. News flash, la 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 la, and I think it's actually quite cruel of the Tories and of all politicians not to tell the British Prime Minister that she's virtually on her own with Brexit. You know, the country is not working together and does not back Brexit. Apart from Dave Hemsley, he thinks it's a great idea. Uh, no, I'm not in Scotland. Scotland's currently still part of the United Kingdom. Well, the United Kingdom is just a name for an amalgam of countries, Dave. The United Kingdom is not a country. Britain is not a country. Scotland is a country. England is a country. Wales is a country or a principality. Northern Ireland, the annexation of the six counties, is a country. So there you are. But Britain and the United Kingdom are an amalgam of countries. Very, very important. Jeremy Corbyn for PM, says Tony Kay. Uh, I'm in Cannock, says Dave Hemsley. Yes, indeed, Cannock in Staffordshire, a fine part of the world. Uh, Theresa May's right to call a general election to get the full backing from everyone in the UK, says Peter Jordan. An interesting one there, Peter. Good to hear that point of view as well. So what you think is that she's taking a gamble. She feels that she doesn't have the mandate of her party. She doesn't have the mandate of the United Kingdom and all the countries in the United Kingdom. Therefore, she's saying, I will fully 100% legitimize myself as the leader of the party, as an elected prime minister, and then I can wipe the floor with everything that's going. So do you think that's what's behind it? Or we can only speculate or guess, so it's very much guesswork. Do you think at the cabinet meeting it's a back me or sack me? One of these. Uh, right, who have we got? You're looking well, Scotty, says Gary Hoare. I thank you, Gary. I have no doubt you're looking extremely well yourself. She will get a few Labour votes as well, says Peter Jordan. It's a collection of countries says Dave Hemsley. Yes, it is, Dave. And uh, people have joined it at varying times. Uh, Scotland didn't really have much choice. It was sold out by a parcel of rogues, and it wasn't theirs to sell. But things were going badly in Scotland at the time because of the way England had been treating Scotland. There was a famine in it. So there you go. Uh, yes, there's plenty going on. Full agreement with Peter Jordan, says Dave. So Dave is obviously... I don't know if you're Tory or if you're to the right of centre or if you're a right winger or if you see yourself as British rather than English or whatever, but you're very, very welcome to put your opinion here. This is not, there is no agenda on the Scotty McClure show. We're only interested in the voice of the people. So there we go. Um, 8th of June will be the end of May says Tony Kay, very, very interesting. A very interesting one, yes. And um, David Gardner's watching. Excellent, David, first class. Now then, if you've just joined us, a very, very, very warm welcome 
to the Scotty McClue Show. We're live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. Spread the word. Tell ten to tell ten to tell ten to tell ten about Scotty McClue. Live here on Facebook Live. <coughs> Pardon me, this is our general election special. So we started at nine o'clock and we'll get your opinions and see what is what. If you can tell everyone that we're on live right now, so spread the word, share, 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 share the video and uh, actually type in, I am watching Scotty McClure live on Facebook Live. Right click on the link on the page you're watching on and send it round everyone. So let me know if, if some of you, if somebody could actually post the link of the page that you're working on, that would be great. Fantastic. Because there are other Scotty McClure pages, and I'm not convinced they even know the show's on. And we're at show number 30 on Sunday night. Fantastic. How's your last day been? How's your day been, says Wadge? Fantastic, Wadge. A superb day. Talked to a lot of very, very interesting people. And, of course, quite excited by the announcement of the general election. So there you are. Or certainly of putting the idea of a general election to the House of Commons. Uh, John Alexander Balfour watching. Didn't you do John Alexander Balfour? Shared, says Catherine Delaney. Thanks, Catherine. Elected beginning of May, in my opinion. So Dave Hemsley is obviously a Theresa May fan and a Brexit fan. There must be a, a number of, uh, of you out there who would uh, back him in that. And uh, he thinks this is the beginning of Theresa May's reign. So there you go. Uh, shared says Sherry B. Thank you very much. She's smart. Is designed to put the Scottish midget in her box rather than Corbyn, says Sean Moore. Now, Sean, we tend not to do that kind of language. Obviously, I'm quoting you. But we don't like language like that. We need to have proper decency. In fact, a lot of people have actually been telling me that they would love Nicola Sturgeon as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. They wish and wish and wish that the Scottish National Party was actually a full British party where anybody in Britain could vote for the SNP. So there you are. There's another side to the story. Um, now, what do we got here? Uh, I don't think so, David Garner. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, can we keep sharing? Share, share, share the video. And as I say, um, also if you can copy the link that you're watching on and, and put it in, in front of me here so that I can see it, that would be tremendous because we're on different devices here to bring you the program. Very, very important. If you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue. We're live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. This is the Scotty McClue show, the one everyone's watching and the one everyone is talking about. We're normally on 10 o'clock sharp on a Sunday night. You will see the shows on Facebook. You will also see the shows on YouTube. Type in Scotty McClue YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. And you can watch any of the 30 shows we've done so far, plus about another uh, 115 videos. Uh, so, sorry, another 215 videos. Uh, so there you go. Uh, hi, Scotty. I hope the Tories get lost this time. SNP forever, says Nivek Nairind. Excellent stuff. Uh, so you're watching on Facebook.com. Ah, brilliant. Are you watching, Sherry B.? Um, are you by any chance watching on the Scotty McClue group? Is that the one you're watching on? Uh, what does that end in? Let me see here. That would be fantastic. I'm just working away with you. Yes, tremendous. Thank you for sending me that link. That's super. Um, and uh, also, send me the link you're watching on. If you're watching throughout the world, in Russia, China, Japan, if you're watching in America, in Canada, do say. Now, Scotty McClure, build up the full picture, guys, about me. Get yourselves onto all social media. We're on Google+. Plus. We're on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook on several pages. There's the public page. There's the page you're watching right now. There's the Scotty McClure fans group. 
with about 3,000 people in it. Well, well over 3,000 people. That last point's very welcome, Scotty, says Dave Hemsley. Now, you've put Seymour, Dave. I am not going to press the Seymour because I have such a tiny device sitting in front of me. It's incredible. The technology is brilliant. Brilliant. But uh, I have such a fine device that I may actually put it off. We've done that before and we lost the program with me tapping the screen with my big tapping fingers. Uh, but I see where you're coming from. Do you think the SNP should venture down to the north of England, says David Gardner. David, I'll be honest with you. I went on uh, City Talk Radio some time ago and they were being slightly jokey. It was the breakfast show, 8 o'clock in the morning. They were being slightly jokey and they said, uh, do you think we should rebuild Hadrian's Wall? Now, there's nothing divisive about me. If we look very closely about the whole political landscape at the moment, you'll see in actual fact that it's English nationalism that is breaking Britain. That's what's dividing it. But they're trying to put the blame of that onto the Scottish nationalists. Now, Scottish nationalism is the very antithesis of English nationalism. It's not got that jingoistic, we are bigger than you attitude. We rule the waves. It doesn't have that, although Britain did have command of the sea eh, about 200 years ago. But um, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with that. Scottish nationalism is a broad church. It is big thinking. It's actually Scottish internationalism. They're very keen to trade with Europe and the rest of the world. The Scots have been doing that for a thousand years. The English have only been doing it for about 50 years. So it's very, very interesting when you look at it. There are a lot of huge differences throughout Britain and we need to acknowledge these differences. We need to acknowledge the differences in culture because it's turning its back on Scotland and just grabbing Scotland's money over the years that has put everyone's back up. And that's what's caused the problem. The tectonic plates of the United Kingdom have shifted. And it, I can see a situation where you have uh, Scotland and Northern Ireland and Wales perhaps self-determining, self-governing. I know there are challenges in Ireland at the moment, but they'll sort that. And also these countries would like to trade with Europe. So Northern Ireland and Scotland and Wales would want to be part of Europe. And I can see a situation where England is the one that's isolated and Mrs May is just in charge of England. And I can see that happening. Uh, I've never voted Tory in my life, but if it keeps Nicola Sturgeon out, I might just do it. Jeremy Corbyn is an honest man, but not up to the task of a very difficult job. Well, you see, I think he is. I think he's just had so much mainstream media, you know, railing against him and internecine fighting in his own party. And that's what's caused the problem. The Labour lot love fighting each other and they, they can't see the big picture. Now, Tony Blair managed to call them all to heel and put a stop to it and said, if you ever want a chance of being elected as a Labour government, follow me. That was what his message essentially was. Whether he said it or not, that was essentially what his message was. Robert McCartney is watching. Dinky do, Robert. Shug McGinty and five others have shared the video now. Nicholas Sturges is incredibly, incredibly popular north of the border and throughout the UK. So why would you have somebody like yourself saying, if it keeps Nicholas Sturgeon out, what have you got against her? What are you missing? What are you not seeing about this lady's immense talents as a leader? Right? Uh, Stuart Buck is watching. Catherine Shaw is watching. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Sherry B and six others have just shared the video. Fantastic. Keep sharing, folks. Let's have a share point now. Share, 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 share. Follow Scotty McClue on Facebook. Follow Scotty McClue on all the Facebook pages that you can find. Follow Scotty McClue on um, 
Google Plus. Follow Scotty McClue. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow Scotty McClue on LinkedIn. And uh, let's start hooking up because these programs are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Tremendous. Big global audience live on Facebook Live. And as I say, this is a special. Adam Mitchell's watching. Dinky you do. Hi, hi, Scotty. How's it going? Hi, hi, Adam. Going very well. I say, lovely to be with you all on this uh, Tuesday evening. The eve of calling a general election by the Conservative Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And uh, who else have we got? Frank McElroy. Welcome, I say. Lovely to hear from you. Spread the word, folks. Keep sharing and sharing and sharing. Let's have your comments. If you want to talk to me live, Skype in. All you have to do is go on your Skype and put in scotty.mcclue and Skype through. And we will take your call and get your opinion on what's happening here. But spread the word. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClure live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. This is the way television's going, guys. I don't know how many of you watched television over Easter and thought, this is just dreadful. There's nothing here I want to see. Uh, Mary Carter is watching Dinky Doo, Mary. Good evening, Mr. McClure, says Frank. John Paul Preston is watching. Welcome, John Paul. Nivek is saying, if the Tories get back in, I will move to Scotland. My name on Facebook is just my name spelt backwards. Kevin Dwyer. How brilliant, Nivek Nairwind. There we are. And I thought you were probably Icelandic. You're on on Tuesday, Scotty. This is amazing says John Paul Preston. Yes, John Paul, I decided that the nation, in fact, all the nations, the globe, needed to have a chat about uh, the British Prime Minister calling a general election or asking permission to hold one. Uh, so there we go. That's why I thought I'd pop up. I can't wait for another Tory majority, says Louis Faber. Louis, you may be waiting for some time. So there you are. So you've got the old Tory in you. I used to support all of that, you know. I was a staunch unionist at one point until I realised Scotland was being ripped off to the tune of £40 billion and we had the children starving. A million people short in Scotland and uh, not good enough, not good enough. One in five. So there you are, Louis. So, uh, you know, have a good look at what the Tories are about and what's actually going on and kind of make your own mind up. Don't necessarily say, I'm a Tory because my grandfather was a Tory, blah, 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 blah. Or I'm Labour because my granny was Labour. It's not so much of that now. Labour are very much in the wilderness in Scotland now. And I think they'll remain there. And it was because of what they did. An ex-Prime Minister coming up and um, putting fear over hope to the Scottish people. I don't think Labour will ever be forgiven for that. So there you are. They should have backed independence for Scotland. In fact, really, I have put up that um, all uh, parties in the Scottish Parliament should be voting for independence regardless of their uh, creed or colour. Uh, would you say Theresa May is panicking a little, says Frank? I think so, yes. We don't know what went on in the Cabinet meeting and we never will because we won't have access to the Cabinet Secretary's minutes. But um, I think there may have been an element. This is just my interpretation through many, many, many years of political experience. I think there may have been an element of back me or sack me, you know, or somebody saying, well, you need to go to the country. Oh, gosh, right. OK, so there we are. Uh, Scotty, does Theresa May strike you as being a stable leader? Um, <clears throat> well, I wasn't impressed with the way Theresa May handled the approach from Nicola Sturgeon about the Scottish uh, referendum, Mark II, IndyRef2, uh, hashtag IndyRef2, I-N-D-Y, R-E-F2. And um, I wasn't impressed with that at all because by the terms of the Treaty of Union, unless something has altered dramatically, Scotland was to be treated on an equal footing with England, right? And if that doesn't happen, then it could mean that they're not acting within the law, within the treaty. 
So they need to look at that. So, uh, you know, when Nicola Sturgeon shouts, um, you know, Mrs. May has to say, come and let me hear you. You know, all that sort of stuff. I hear you. Oh, well said, Louis Faber. So Dave Hemsley, so you're a big Tory person. But um, <clears throat> look at what Margaret Thatcher did to the country. She absolutely tore it apart and ripped the heart out of it. So having said that, did the country need to change after 150 years of industrial revolution, following on on um, the agrarian revolution? Had the Labour Party after the Second World War, when they threw old Churchill out, had they been too powerful when Manny Shinwell dug up the gardens of Wentworth Woodhouse in South Yorkshire um, out of just uh, politics of envy? Did he go far too far? Did that shock and appall those who were right thinking that they reformed a very powerful Tory um, party and uh, they've almost been in power without interruption, haven't they? Since the Second World War, when uh, Wilson was in a couple of times, you know, uh, the Attlee government, very, very powerful. And uh, if you look at um, a video of Sir Winston Churchill's funeral in 1965, January 1965, you'll see Clem there, Clem Attlee. Now, he was a great Labour man, but he was Churchill's deputy uh, as well. Anthony Eden, of course, wonderful man, carried Churchill for years and years and years in more ways than one. And then when it came Anthony's time, uh, Churchill resigned in 55, and Anthony took over, and Anthony resigned in 56 over Suez. So he just got um, a few months out of it. Um, so there we are. Not a Tory, says Dave Hemsley. You surprised me, Dave. Yeah, I can't do the C more, so you'll just have to tell me bits as it comes. Dean Park, Scotland's finest entertainer, is watching. I say dinky-doo to you, Dean Park. Let me know when is it. Tell us when you're on at the Gaiety Theatre. Pop it down in your Facebook and I will tell the world, the whole world. Fantastic. Uh, they want us to be one well. They want us to be one well for a start. England should accept our money. After all, we accept English money, no problem. Frank, you're quite right. I went into a filling station in Wokingham in Berkshire one night and um, handed over the... Uh, uh, a Scottish tenor, and he, the chap was turning round and saying to the assistant, can I take this money, is it? Sorry, sir, I don't think we can take this. I said, I beg your pardon, sir, and gave him a wee bit of a lecture, shall I say. Um, I believe there's to be a massive march for independence on the 3rd of June. The general election is to happen on the 8th. Very interesting times ahead for us all, says John Paul Preston. Yes, now do be very, very, very weary of the so-called MSM mainstream media. If you want to trust everything you get, tune in to me, Scotty McClue, on the Scotty McClue Show. But uh, I would say a lot of mainstream media, take it with a pinch of salt. Watch the newspapers. If they're very anti uh, one or the other, then just blank it, just ignore it. Um, I told you the other night, I tend to not buy newspapers now unless I'm in them. And... Um, what I'll do is maybe tell myself just a whopper in the morning, just a, a huge big whopper, just to make up a lot of rubbish, tell it to myself, and it cuts out the middleman. Uh, Mrs May is a far better PM than the previous incumbent, says Dave Hemsley. Well, the previous incumbent was very, very charming. I think you just didn't expect this Brexit thing to take off. Uh, so there, but Mrs May does need to be very, very careful with the whole Brexit thing. As I say, it's incredibly cruel of the Tories not to tell her that she's probably uh, almost on her own with it, you know, and they'll just stand back and give her plenty of room when it comes time to slide. Um, you know, that's what they'll do. But we'll see. I mean, let's not forecast anything. Let's get the general election sorted first. Uh, so there we are. Mike Henfield is watching one of the world's great journalists watching right now. Wonderful, wonderful radio executive, chief executive, yeah, and as they say, one of the world's great journalists, a man who built up the radio industry in this country, a very fine teacher and lecturer as well. Mike Henfield, I salute you, sir. Dinky do. Mike Henfield was actually the man who was there at the birth of Scotty McClue. What about that? Perhaps the greatest radio phenomenon that has happened since Marconi. 
brought the airwaves to life. Uh, Sherry B and 13 others, fantastic. I've just shared the video. Oh, yes. Let's have a share point, guys. Share, 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 share. Now, it's up to every single one of you watching to take this seriously and to um, copy it in, copy and paste. Tell all your friends, send it right round the whole social media firmament. Um, Louis Faber says, Labour will split into two, one being a centre Blairites party under Hillary Benn. Oh, a little bit of a forecast there. I'm sure Hillary Benn will appreciate that. Uh, we certainly loved his father. I met his father and I was a big fan. A charming, charming man. Scotty, Greenville, North Carolina and the USA. Dairy friends have been raving about your podcast. I love your accent, says Dean Gurley. Dean Gurley, Dinky Doo from Carolina. Tremendous, the Carolinas. We've always thought Scotty McClue would go very well in the Carolinas. So there you are. Um, so, oh dear, John Paul, we can't say that. I'm not saying that. Billy Matheson, you're watching Dinky Doo, oh. Dean Gurley. Lovely to have you. Spread the word round the whole of the United States of America. We had a poll just a week or two ago. I think you can still see it on Twitter. If you go to at Scotty McClue, follow me on Twitter, everyone. And uh, you go on to Twitter, and we had a poll. Who is the bigger name, Scotty McClue or, um, what's his name again? Donald Trump. And uh, it was Scotty McClue. There we go. So uh, no surprises there. Fantastic. Um, can you actually keep sharing and sharing and sharing, folks? Do not stop for a moment. Too many big smoke screen in government these days, no matter what party speaks, would rather have puffed the magic dragon as the Prime Minister. Well, of course, this is the other point we're making. How important nowadays, excuse me while I have a quick sip, how important nowadays is it actually uh, to have you know, the, uh, the the elected government. I mean, is, is, is Sir Humphrey, if you'll pardon the yes minister reference. Oh, that's beautiful, that. Is Sir Humphrey, I'll put it down here. Is Sir Humphrey uh, running the show, if you've ever watched Yes Minister? And Mrs. Thatcher used to think that it was incredibly realistic. You know, comedy program on the British Broadcasting Corporation. Scotty, love your broadcast. Stinky do, says Billy Matheson. Scotty for PM says Nivek Nai Ruid. There you go. Did I get it right, Nivek? I think I'll just call you Kevin. Um, John Paul Preston, fantastic. Lovely to know that you're with us, of course, a great man. Now, just while I'm on, I'm on the subject, John Paul Preston, you've reminded me. Guys, I'm setting up a free independent media with no agenda. And we may do a Scottish six o'clock news. And I'm wanting help with finance. Don't all start running away. Wanting help with finance to improve the equipment and also perhaps to buy media assets. So we set up a fund at five million quid. Now, think about it. If I announced that I would sell shares in a Scotty McClue enterprise, I would be absolutely overwhelmed with business people going, take my money, take my money, take my money. That's not what I'm doing here. I'd like people to put in small amounts, two pounds, five pounds, a tenner, something like that, and actually go fund me. So I've set up a GoFundMe page. So if you go on to GoFundMe and you go gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue and stick a couple of quid in, that'd be great. Job done. Oh, no, job not quite done. Share it on Facebook and Twitter and tell everyone that you've stuck some of your hard-earned cash in. Because then you've put in two pounds or five pounds or ten pounds. And if a year or two down the line somebody says, Whoo, this is gobbling money. Did you lose a lot? Did you get your fingers burned? You went, it's a tenner. It doesn't matter. It's for Scotty. The man's been around for 25 years entertaining the nation entertaining several nations now he's entertaining the world it's a tenor not a problem so if you don't mind that also there's a link floating about for paypal if you prefer that stick a fiver in something like that and away we go good on you scotty kiss kiss says morsi puffin kiss kiss to you morsi i hope you are well and getting from strength to strength angel wonderful lady morsi's in australia yeah there you go 
We're watching in Australia right now. Dave Hemsley says, nonsense. Nonsense to what, Dave? What do you mean nonsense? Tell us a little bit more. And don't do this see more stuff, because I don't want to lose the broadcast by putting my big finger on good prod to see more, because the writing is tiny. Absolutely tiny. I would say we're probably talking about a millimeter. And I've got these quite big hands, as you see, for playing the piano and the pipe organ. And, um, you know, the problem with that is we might actually lose you. Uh, if anybody wants to Skype in, Scotty.McClue is the Skype. Feel free so to do. And keep sharing and sharing and sharing this video. Fantastic stuff. So, quick recap. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on LinkedIn. Follow me on Google+, Plus. follow me on um, YouTube, and subscribe to YouTube, because if we get another 100 subscribers or so, we can broadcast live on YouTube. Follow me on Periscope. Those of you who are on Periscope, I've just started broadcasting on Periscope, and the broadcasts attract good old numbers. So follow me on Periscope and start um, sharing all the broadcasts on there. We did an Easter message the other day. We did a Good Friday special. We did the big Sunday show at 10 o'clock sharp till 11. And tonight, of course, is Scotty McClure's general election special, an edition of the Scotty McClure show for your edification, education, information, and delight in your entertainment. Uh, about Mr. Cameron being a charming man. Do you not think so? I thought he was very charming. But he got off his mark. You have to say that, and he got out of politics pretty sharp as well. There truly is no better investment than you, Scotty McClure, says John Paul Preston. Do you know, John Paul, although I say it myself, I have to agree. It's the best five or ten pounds anyone will ever have spent in their life. And I'll tell you for why. When people say to me, Scotty, why should I give my money to you when I could adopt a snow leopard, or people are starving, or whatever? If you give your money to me, I can build up a media. If I build up a media, I can tell the world about the snow leopards and the children who are starving. So do you see how well spent your money actually is? There you go. And uh, will the Tories' refusal to do TV debates come back to bite them, says Alan Cadden. Yes, you see, I think nowadays a good politician has to be very, very media savvy. If you look back to Churchill and Anthony Eden, they did a lot of broadcasting on film. So, you know, the Pathé News and things like that. I used to see them on film, and they used the film camera. Churchill was charming. Very, very funny man to work with, apparently. In fact, you can see some of his outtakes on, on YouTube. But he, you know, posed for the camera. But they weren't media savvy in that, uh, you know, Theresa May could be in the cabinet this morning. Something happens around the world. She doesn't know about it. She could then go out into Downing Street, and she could get doorstepped by somebody coming up. That's another thing that's changed, the way journalists ask questions. And um, they could say, uh, Mrs. May, what do you think about what's just happened? And she goes, well, what's just happened? And she doesn't want to be caught in the headlights. Just out of sight, I would imagine, will be her press secretary, her press advisors. And, uh, you know, they'll be hanging around so they can whisper. And she goes, all right, yeah, okay. And, and all that sort of thing. So you've got to be quite media savvy. And I know a rather a lot about this, having spent 40 years in the media. And they will catch you. They'll catch up with you. And you've got to have your answers. And you are caught on camera. And now you used to be able to see the cameras coming because there were big either film cameras or huge television cameras. Even the handheld ones were massive, big, heavy. Any cameraman watching will back me up here. Massive, big, heavy mobile cameras that you rested on your shoulder. And uh, being a camera person is a great, great skill. But nowadays, everybody's. A camera person, they've got the phones, you know, and what have you. Okay, Scotty, time to go. We'll catch you again very soon. Have a great night, says Frank McElroy. I thank you, Frank. Off to Bobo's with you, Lala. Scotty, what are your views on North Korea? Do you think Trump will hit the bike button? Well, no. <clears throat> North Korea is a theater. 
right? Very, very theatrical. The bulk of North Koreans are poor, poor souls, if you'll pardon the, the pun, Seoul, of course, is South Korea, but they're poor, poor souls. And um, I think that, how can I put this? I think all this posturing and what have you does not actually warrant the nukes and all the attention from America. Obviously, they've got to keep an eye on what's going on because stuff's out of control. I mean, that missile that went off the other night, it was just, a, you know, it would have ruined your firework night uh, from that point of view. So you can't really have dafties letting nuclear weapons off, no matter how much they see they're testing and what have you. But it sounds to me like Korea, because the British were in Korea. Uh, they all came back just before the Queen's coronation, 1952, uh, 53, coming back from Korea. And um, I, it sounds to me like they would quite like unification or reunification. That's what's going on there. But uh, nuke buttons, no, no, you need to be steering well clear of that. That's my view. Get round the big table and never mind the, the, the nuke buttons. Although I used to say that, uh, you know, to keep the peace, you had to be prepared for war. And the nuke was the big stick in the corner, the blackthorn stick that people's grannies used to have when we were wee. Scotty, um, what have we got here? Nuke button, not bike. Oh, sorry, predictive text. Yes, absolutely. Andrew Thomas is watching, Dinky Doo. And Robert Bain is watching. Tremendous stuff. Uh, we've got about another 10 minutes to go, folks. So uh, keep putting in your views. If you'd like to talk to me live, this would be a good experiment. So if you're feeling generous, Skype me. It won't cost you. Scotty dot McClue. And we can uh, try out the Skype and have a little bit of a chit chat. That would be fabulous. And uh, Andrew Thompson, I thank you very much indeed. Um, as for doing the television debates, the full answer to your question, I went in to talk about cameras there and everything. But the full answer to your question is yes, politicians need to be media savvy. They need to be very, very aware of the camera. And they need to give you a good line that you know the journalists are not just going to throw it on the cutting floor, just go bloop and delete from their phone and say that was just a lot of rubbish. So they're after a good line. So they are very, very important. Called a sound bite, I believe. Um, Theresa May has got fiat, hence a rush election. There is some wisdom in what you're saying there, Angie. Um, I think she thinks it's now or never. So if she's going to go to the country and get the backing, she's polling quite high in England. And uh, she's hoping that she's not polling well in Scotland at all and never actually will because of her intransigence and her attitude. The Scots do not like that kind of snobby brush off that they got uh, last week. The time is not right. I mean, if Nicola Sturgeon could very well just throw that back at Theresa May and say, now is not the right time for an election. So there you go. Jane McDonald's watching Dinky Doo to you. Jane McDonald, a very fine lady. Um, hi, Scotty, says Lisa Preston. Dinky Doo, Lisa. John says, I think Russia intervened with the North Korean launch the other day. They more than likely shot it down. Well, I don't know that, so I shan't actually comment. John, you're ahead of me in that, and I bow to your superior knowledge and wisdom. Um, what happened to now is not the time, says Malcolm Corrigan. That's been forgotten very conveniently. Hold on, we have a Skyper. It's David. Let's see. Keep Skyping, David. Here it goes. Come on. Hello, Dave. Think you do. Are you on there? Can you hear me? Hello, Dave. David, can you hear me? Dinky do. Let me just get the microphone. Can you hear me now, David? Hello. Right there we are. We're holding on. We're holding on. Sorry, folks. You're out of uh, kilter. I'll turn you that way so you can see what's going on. Is that better? So there we are. We internet problem with David. We'll see if he's there. Hello, David. Hello. Excellent. Right. Not not to worry. Try again, David. Let's have you again, sign. Give us another wee call and we'll see if we can get you. In fact, I, I, I can probably call you. Wait till we see what's going on here. Yes, because it just says call drop, guys. We're just having a quick Skype here. 
Uh, so don't worry. What happened to now is not the time. Exactly, Malcolm. It just kind of disappeared off the table. I think it suited Mrs. May at the time. But she needs to be very, very careful about not giving, uh, you know, Miss Sturgeon the cold shoulder. Uh, so there you are, because Miss Sturgeon has got a huge, huge following throughout the country. Uh, Theresa May, um, this is time for uncertainty, apparently, says Gary. Gary Crossan, fantastic. Let's see, we'll keep trying and see if we can get a hold of, uh, of Dave here. I'm going to try him again. I'm going to actually try him. There we go. Right. Good. Oh. Yes, yeah, it's, it's ringing. Here we go, guys. Can you hear that? Can you hear that in Kilmarnock? Hello, Dave. Hello. Hello, Dave. Hello. Hello, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Fantastic. Can you hear me? Good evening. We can hear you. Lovely to have you with us live on the Scotty McClue Show. Dinky do, I say. And you, mate, and you. Yeah, absolutely. That's Andrew Tom says she can see my belly. Dear, oh dear. Good for her. <laughs> right, now then, Dave. Uh, are you something of a right winger then? Not necessarily, but I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Mrs. May, to be honest. Of Mrs. And, May. Uh, and, and, and what is, has she got that you think this is just wonderful? What's she bringing to she, the party? She's pushing ahead with, with the plan that Mr. The, the, the previous uh, colleague, her you know, started with. Her predecessor. The, uh, yes. Yes. That's Ab the right word. Absolutely. So, you think this is good stuff, what's going on at the moment? You like the old Brexit? Oh, yes. Now, what's, what's so attractive about it, David? Are you a businessman? No, no, not at all. No? I just feel that, I feel that we've been stuck in the wilderness for... for 40 years, near enough. But do you not think Mrs. Me is probably leading us all into the wilderness? Not at all. She's telling us that the country is united. I've never seen the country as disunited as it is at the moment. Yeah, but perhaps it's because she hasn't, at the moment, she hasn't got a mandate, has she? Right, so, on... so you think she's actually playing a very clever game? Oh, yes. Superb. And she's going for the she's going for the mandate, and once she gets that, she thinks she can wipe the floor with everyone. Oh yeah. Now, do you think we've done it in the right or the wrong order? Do you think we've put the cart before the horse? Should we had have had the Scottish Indie Ref two before we actually went for the um, the uh, general election now and the Brexit? Yes, I do. We should have had Scottish Indian F2. Yes. Yes. And if Scotland had then voted to leave, they've gone. And they can let England get on and do its business. Yes. Yes. Do its business or get off the potty. But, but at the end of the day, the, the situation is as it is now. And, uh, you know, Nicola Sturgeon just has to wait now, doesn't she? She does, she does. Dave, lovely hearing from you. Thank you for all your uh, contributions and, of course, for your generosity. And uh, we will catch up soon. Yes, lovely to hear from you as well. Keep up the good work. Hey, and you, lad. Dinky do. Right, there we are. That's uh, Dave Hemsley in Cannock in Staffordshire. And that was one of our first Skype calls. Tremendous stuff. So there you go, folks. That's all that's to it. If you want to come on and talk to Scotty McClure anytime, you can do it. Uh, Theresa May is number one fan. One, two, three. Her only fan. Uh, Lisa Preston. Deal with Brexit. Then independence. And then the EU. So uh, I see what you're after. So what are you saying then, Lisa? Are you saying that we should come out of the UK and then come out of the EU? Aha. Uh -huh. Have a listen to Scotty McClue talking to John Gaunt about Scottish independence on YouTube. Get yourselves onto that. Scotty for First Minister, says Gary Hoare. Thank you, Gary. I'm actually wondering, should I stand for politics at this general election? Should I see if I can get myself elected and get round the big table with them all? Keep them all in order. 
Fantastic. Keep your comments coming, guys. Hi, Vera. Ray Fleming says, well said, Lisa Preston. Excellent stuff. Gary Crossley is watching Dinky Doo. Can we have another massive share, please, guys? Share, 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 share. If you've just joined us throughout the world, and I know people are joining us all the time, then you're watching Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, with the world's top talk show. This is the big one, live on Facebook Live. If you'd like to help fund us, go and put five pounds or five dollars or five yen or five rupees into www.gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. Or Ray, look up GoFundMe and put in Scotty McClue. Um, go for it, Scotty, says Ray. Dinky do. Yes, so should Scotty become an MP or attempt to become an MP at the general election? I'll need to get my skates on. Scotty, you couldn't do any worse than that, Mob, says Nivag. Maybe a fabulous idea about you becoming a politician, says Dave Hemsley. Sophie McAllister, I don't think we should be voting because it's a waste of time and money. Sophie, a lot of people will be agreeing with you, actually. I'm saying this is a complete waste of time and money because the last two votes, the Scottish referendum was incredibly disappointing for, uh, for the Scots. And when people say, I thought it was supposed to be once in a generation, well, Mrs. May is now calling another general election just shortly after the last one. Um, if Scotland had another Indiref 2 before Brexit, we'd need Brexit too, says Lynn Kay. <laughs> well, I put up a poll on Twitter, at Scotty McClue, on Twitter, guys. Go on there, follow me, and check out Periscope. I broadcast on Periscope as well. And if you will subscribe to the Scotty McClue YouTube channel, just click subscribe. It doesn't cost you. Then if I get a 1,000 subscribers, I've got um, 820 at the moment. If I get a 1,000 there, we can broadcast on that as well. A re-vote Brexit, how about it? Now, Michael McGuigan, you've taken the words right out of Scotty McClue's mouth. Not many people managed to do that, but that's what I put up on my poll. I said, if you kn knew what you know now at EU ref, would you have voted to stay or go? And they said, stay, remain, remain. Everybody realises. I mean, I actually voted leave because I thought that the NHS in England would get another 350 million quid or whatever was on the side of the bus. I believed Boris Johnson's claim. And um, then afterwards, of course, when the Brexit vote um, turned the way it did, uh, all the Brexiteers did a runner. Remember, they disappeared for a weekend. You couldn't find them. Uh, I honestly believe that all the MPs in Scotland will be SNP after this election. I can't wait to see Ruth Davidson getting sacked. There's John Paul Preston. That's harsh on Ruth Davidson, John Paul. You know what? But there may be others who agree with you. Who knows? Ruth Davidson should wear a dunce's hat, says Gary Crossan. No one realises no one realized what was involved, says Ray Fleming. Ray, I think you're absolutely right. I think the British people who said, well, I've had enough of Europe. I think I'll vote against this. Just tactical voting. They didn't expect to actually come out of Europe. Uh, no wonder Mr Cameron got off his mark. Uh, yes, but it's actually disrespectful not to go with the PM's decision, says Dave Hemsey. Yes, but you see, Scotland has a mandate. The leader in Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, has a full mandate from the Scottish people to go for independence. So there you are. So Mrs May should not get in the way. Lisa says, Big Ruth is okay. So there you go. Uh, yes, but it's actually disrespectful. We've said that one. Uh, Big Ruth is okay. Now, uh, we're tight for time. Some more sharing, 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 please. This is Scotty McClure's general election special. It's Tuesday night. It's uh, five minutes to nine o'clock, to uh, ten o'clock, I say. We came on at nine o'clock tonight. It's now five minutes to ten o'clock. I can't believe this hour has just flown in. It's been lovely, lovely, lovely talking with you, although I say. And uh, thank you for all your contributions. Very interesting to see what the people are thinking. I'll uh, upload this onto YouTube. I didn't write that, says Lisa Preston. So somebody's having a laugh with Lisa. They've put it on her on her uh, tablet there or her um, keyboard. 
<laughs> Big Ruth's okay. She didn't actually say that. I didn't write that, says Lisa. So there's her disclaimer. I don't think that means that Big Ruth is not okay, of course. It's just she she's just telling us she didn't write it. The bookies odds forecast an outright win for Mrs. May, says Dave Hemsley. Well, they will at the moment. Remember, Scotland is just 10% of the UK. We collect in 9% of the BBC's license fee and allegedly we get 3% of it back spent on Scottish programming. Very interesting. Uh, Stephen McFarlane's watching and uh, I would like to see um, it's a, probably going to be a bit of a push now before um, Indie Ref 2 but I would quite like to see a Scottish Broadcasting Corporation funded with public service money. In other words, your license in Scotland goes to the Scottish Broadcasting Corporation and it's regulated by the government in Holyrood. Yeah, right, Lisa. Yeah, very good, says Gary. So there you go. Stephen McFarlane's watching. Um, the Ruth, the Ruth, the Ruth is on fire. Lol. Will David Mundell hold his seat, says Alan Cadden. Who knows, Adam? That's a very interesting question. It's almost like the end of a drama. Will David Mundell hold his seat? We shall find out. The SPC, says Stephen McFarlane. If we are having the SPC, I would like, with a full mandate from you, the Scottish people, to become its first director general. Even if only do it for a few years, just to build it up so that I can uh, give you a legacy of high quality Scottish broadcasting. That's what it's all about. So uh, we shall find out who will hold their seats, who are all the runners and riders on the 8th of June, provided it gets the nod, the nod, in the House of Commons tomorrow. So they've still got that to go. But I'm quite sure Mrs May is quite confident that it will get the nod. So there we go. Any more comments from you guys? You've been fantastic tonight. Wonderful. Right. Dave Hems has got the last word. I've been in the bookies today, and the odds for Mr. Corbyn as PM are silly. Lol. If I was a betting man, I would love to put a few quid uh, each way on Mr. Corbyn, and I would love to see him get it, and then McClure would clean up, and we could set up the Scottish Broadcasting Corporation. Dinky-doo. A shout-out to the budgie, please. He's a good guy. This is Gary Crossan. Fantastic. Thank you to all of you for making this programme so tremendous tonight. Keep sharing it and sharing it and sharing it during the week. Remember to join me at 10 o'clock sharp on Sunday night for the big one, the Scotty McClue Show live on Facebook Live. If there's any more news, I will pop up and we will have an ad hoc prog, an ad hoc program. But until then, have a wonderful week. This is Scotty McClue saying thanks for watching. Go fund me, I say. Go and look it up. GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty Ivan McClue or PayPal. Go and follow me on every single bit of social media you can find me on. All right, pop it into Google and I'll see you all Sunday night, 10 o'clock sharp, God willing, weather permitting. Until then, this is Scotty McClue saying dinky doo. Do you want the song? Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of which are zane. Au revoir and a cheerio. Cheerio, loves. Dinky-doo. Scotty McClue has left the building.